can see his banner over here is now.
we may always revere and love your holy name. We are never deprived of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, to praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Romans, rather consistent. <laughs> through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not a But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Terribly afraid to feel be filled with joy. Then 
St. Paul comes along and says, this is what people thought, that it's only about Israel, but now it's about everybody. And, and Jesus is saying to his apostles, don't be afraid to go and tell other people about who you are and what your life is about and how you know me and how I love, I love all of you. And so that's a wonderful gift. And so I've, I've always asked at First Communion um, because of the fact that it's important for us to know. And I think that the best answer of, to this question comes from seven-year theologians <laughs> <laughs> who understand this very well. And, and the, the simple question is, where does Jesus live? <clears throat> where does he live? Anybody want to tell me? Good, yes. Everywhere. Where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a wonderful answer. Yeah. And some people might answer here, right? We call this the house of God. And some people might say, well, Jesus lives there in in the tabernacle. And some people might say that Jesus lives in me, in us, in our hearts. There's a piece where, where Jesus said that anyone who loves me and my Father and I will come and make our home in them. Jesus wants to live inside of us. And how, we, how do we come to know that Jesus lives inside of us? It's, it's, we receive Jesus here, but we take him out there. And one of our folks said that the way that people know Jesus know we people know that Jesus lives in us, the way that we they know that what we do here at the Eucharist, when we celebrate the Eucharist here at Mass, they know that we receive the body and blood of Christ by the way we do it right, right? No. <laughs> by how we treat one another. How simple is that? We take what we receive here and we take it out there. It's because of the fact that there are many times when we, we, we need to say, you know, Jesus is part of me. And, you know, I remember uh, there was a wonderful old movie and story about a young boy who went to a boarding school, and it's called uh, a Tom Brown School Days, and everybody liked Tom Brown, and everybody did what Tom Brown did. But they had a new student there who knelt down at his bed to pray. And all the other kids are laughing at him, throwing things at him. Well... The next day, Tom Brown knelt with the other kids. And everybody was quiet. Because of the wonderful example that this kid, who was a leader in that school, offered to all the other kids there. And I think that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, he said, you know me. You've been with me. And you know how to go out there and tell other people about the love of God and that we're always with people and how we should treat one another and be good to one another. And so it's, it's a simple, it's a very simple lesson. But it's a lesson that we learn, first of all, where? Where does Jesus live? He lives in our homes, too. It's by how we treat one another. I know some families, I won't mention any names, but I know some families that pray together a whole lot. But I know about the one, remember this one family, they told me that after they, when they were celebrating their 25th anniversary, that the reason that they were, all, they always had this sense of belonging to one another, they had a happy marriage, is because of the fact that they, the mother and the father prayed every night. Every night. They prayed before they went to bed. In their own, in their own room. He said they started out the Our Father and the Hail Mary, then they started reading the Bible, and then they started praying spontaneously. But it was the example of their parents that gave them this sense of the fact that Jesus was always with them. And that's a wonderful gift to offer, that we have to offer one another. And it's a blessing that we have to offer one another. And we need to get it from, you know, from, from other people. As you grow up, I'm fond of saying that my first experience of religion came from, not from my parents, but from my grandmother. Polish grandmother who came to this country um, from Poland, and I lived with her when I was a small child, and I first learned how to pray in Polish. I can pray in Polish. And here, many, many, many years ago, I can still do that. That 
woman had such a great effect on my life because of her example of faith. And you know when she died? How old are you? How old are you guys? How old? Seven, eight? Seven. My grandmother died when I was seven. So for the first seven years of my life, that example of faith keeps me here. And it didn't hurt not only to have a wonderful grandmother who taught me about faith and prayer, etc. It didn't hurt for me to live across the street from a from a con from a concert of sisters. <laughs> that helped too. But so we want to welcome all of you to the table of the Lord. And you're here because your mom and your dad have blessed you with their faith. And your grandmas and grandpas, and I had wonderful uncles that took me everywhere. I had all these people, sisters from school, and uncles and aunts, and grandparents and parents, all these wonderful examples of faith. And I hope that's your gift. And as you celebrate this, your first communion on Father's Day, oh, that's, that's a wonderful remembrance. I didn't tell anybody that when he asked for birthdays, but I celebrated my birthday last week too. <laughs> but I, I didn't receive First Communion on Father's Day, but I graduated from grade school on Father's Day. It was my birthday, Father's Day, and it was a feast of the body and blood of Christ. I'll never forget that. And I remember when I had my First Communion that no stores were open. Only in one part of the city of Chicago called Maxwell Street. It was the Jewish part of town. And we, we ran out of soda. <laughs> I remember going, this is years and years and years ago. This is such a wonderful day for you. I hope that you remember it. You're going to remember it all the rest of the days of your life. <laughs> it's because it's the day when Jesus, when he, the Jesus that's here, comes to you and is with you in your home, in your heart, in, in your life. And that's something that you continue to celebrate every time you come here. If you come here four Sundays from now, I'm going to ask you, how many times you received Jesus? <laughs> Hopefully it'll be four. <laughs> that's a wonderful gift. So welcome to the celebration of God's presence in your life on this wonderful day. In which Jesus says, don't be afraid. Remember the little video that you saw me telling you? What did I tell you on that video? You're supposed to do it this way. You're supposed to come up. But if you, but if you, hey, but if you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What's really important is not exactly doing it the way we were trained to do it, but that we receive Jesus. That's what's most important. That the Jesus that we receive here, we take out there as well. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. And on this day, as Deacon Jerry reminded you, that it's that it all began with your baptism. So at your baptism, you didn't say this, but your parents and and your godparents said this for you. But today you get a chance to say, it, to say it for yourself. And what I'm going to ask you to say is after each of these sentences to say, I do. Okay? Let's practice. I do. I do. I do. All right. You got it. So let me ask you. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. do. You renounce Satan, author and prince of author and prince of sin. I do. do. You believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I do. do. You believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit. I do. The Holy Catholic Church. I do. The communion of saints. I do. The forgiveness of sins. I do. The resurrection of the body. I do. And life everlasting. I do. And so do I. <laughs> and may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us due birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. 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 And now we're going to ask the Lord to hear our prayer petition.
The Lord's love and concern for us assures us that he answers all our prayers with his constant help. Our response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our fathers on this special day. May they always know our love and gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our spiritual fathers, Father Jim, Father Terry, Father Frank, Father Dino, and soon to be Father Sonny, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for hero healers and dedicated researchers who bring strength, healing, and hope for a cure and treatment for all who suffer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those with the power of leadership that they may serve with an inclusive respect for life in all of its gifts, manifestations, and diversity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all that in our parish and family meals may be a time to share love, strengthen unity, and foster happiness as we welcome our first communicants to the table of the Lord today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the sick of the parish, especially for Eddie Belto Reyes, Carlos Burgos, and Manuel Pino, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the living and deceased members of our Good Shepherd family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayers. For those who have died in the hope of rising again, may they see God face to face, we pray for Georgie. Georgina Gonzalez, Neri Cardenas, and Sharon Boyle, and for the repose of the soul of Demetrio Swan Singh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, for those contained in the community book of prayer, and for all those who have asked for our prayers for whom we have promised to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Now join me in the prayer for La Salette vocations. God our Father, we give you thanks for calling us to embrace the gift of life and to share it. As one through Jesus the Christ, you chose the first disciples to proclaim the good news and poured out the Spirit upon the church. Renew us now in our vocation and our mission of reconciliation. Let the same call echo in the hearts of many young persons, that they may generously respond to the needs of our brothers and sisters, after the example of Mary, the beautiful Lady of Rosalus, inspired the men and women of our time the desire to be light and salt in the church and the world. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We pray now, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice of bread and wine and ourselves may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept his sacrifice at our hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good and good of all his holy church. church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mystery, receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, 
also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that you, all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you. And all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we to extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. with our brother, with 
our teacher Jesus, who teaches us how to pray as brothers and sisters. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you, look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we now to be called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter into my room, room. but Lord, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We're going to invite the first communicant to come with their families up the uh, center aisle. The rest of the uh, congregation, uh, the communion will be given to you in your pews. Mm -hmm. Please do not come forward, remain in your pews. The Eucharistic ministers will come to you in those, in those pews that are empty every other pew and give communion uh, to you there. So please keep your mask on until after you receive.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. We pray this for Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. On this day, we should thank the most important Father there is, right? Mm -hmm. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. And that... Uh, Thank you. Happy Father's Day to our three spiritual fathers. <laughs> and we didn't thank you properly at the beginning of Mass. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Father Terry. Happy birthday to you. And my grandmother taught me to say, Yep, it's that so. <laughs> Please remember to call the parish office to RSVP for the Mass you will be attending on the weekend. Next weekend we will be celebrating the sacraments of RCIA, that's the Rite of Christian in, in, in the Induction of Adults, Initiation of Adults, on Saturday at the 4.30 Mass 
and the sacrament of confirmation at most of the Sunday Masses, be aware of that. We ask everyone to please exit through the side doors as we will be disinfecting the church for the people that come in for the next Mass. So we enter through the side doors, we enter through the, the center doors. And Father, you have a blessing for this? Yes, I do. And just another reminder that Oh, with all the first communicants will be taking you and I will be taking pictures with the children. Um, by the staff of our back door. Would you please stand for a final blessing and especially a blessing for our fathers? Now, Simon says, sit up. <laughs> Simon says, sit up. Only the fathers stand. Oh. <laughs> God bless you. And so we pray for the fathers. We all raise our hands. Heavenly Father, we turn to you today as we remember our fathers and those fatherly figures in our life. We thank you for our fathers who gave us life and who nourished us as a family following the example of St. Joseph, who cared for and guarded your only begotten son here on earth and his wife Mary. Bless our fathers today with joy and peace and happiness as we, their children, honor and gratitude all that they have given to us over these years. And bless also our grandfathers and all who provided fatherly love and protection to us throughout our lives. May they know our gratitude and appreciation for them, bestow your blessings upon us, their children, and help us to give honor and glory to the name and to you, our Heavenly Father. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Amen. Be to God. Amen. And happy Father's Day. Let's all sing this little line of mine. This little line of mine.